I believe that consumers and merchants should have the choice and, and have the option of accepting all forms of payment. And we're seeing more and more, for sure, moving towards crypto. But we're, we're still just at the beginning stage. Hello and welcome to the Ecom Ops Podcast. We believe that there is more than enough content focused on e-commerce marketing and not enough content celebrating the real heroes of e-commerce, those running the operation. Each week, we find and interview an e-commerce operations expert to share the secrets behind how some of this industry's most exciting businesses are run. I'm your host, Norbert Strappler, the CEO of SingSpider. Hello and welcome to the Ecom Ops podcast. My name is Norbert and today I have a alternative coin expert here in my uh, studio. Hello Jason, welcome to the show. Hi Norbert, how are you doing? Great to be here. Hi. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. How are you? Excellent. That's great. So uh, today we are talking about um, uh, coin payments in e-commerce. But before we start, let's tell us a bit about yourself. So how did you get into e-commerce? Sure. Well, in the uh, early 90s, we were uh, originally starting to develop a platform called WSN, the World Shopping Network. So that was the original step into uh, into e-commerce. the World Shopping Network is essentially what, what the internet is today. But of course, we were far before our, our years and our time. And although we could buy and sell and trade and see images and do things uh, within our office space, there wasn't any connectivity. Very, very few bought, you know, 56 bought modems or 28 date bought oh, wow. modems <laughs> didn't allow for uh, a lot of transactions. Even a lot of people were still on 14.4 and 96.00. So, you know, it was, it was pretty early. But that when was, was the this? Original. When was that this? That was uh, in uh, 1992, 93. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's so, really long. So that was a long time ago. That was the initial stages of my e-com ventures. And, and then we uh, went into lots of different things and started uh, – a payment gateway platform and service to help merchants with, with traditional payments, MasterCard and credit cards, etc. And I yeah. uh, was involved in that space for a long time, as well as the ATM industry. So, yeah. Uh, yeah that, and then um, in about 2015, I started uh, looking at and supporting um, the founders of Coin Payments with, uh, as, as an advisor and mentor. In 2016, I became a shareholder and partner in the company. Yeah, and the, the the website is coinpayments.net, and uh, and you have support over, and this is really stunning, over two hundred uh, two thousand different altcoins already. That's right. Yeah, In, inside of our wallet infrastructure, we're supporting over two thousand uh, over two thousand coins. Uh, in our payment system, there's about one hundred and fifty or something like that that are actually payment tokens with specific payment nodes and, and other elements so that we can support direct payments. But within our wallet infrastructure, we're supporting over 2,000. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's really uh, a, a lot. Um, what was the impetus behind the creation of coin payments? Well, originally, the founders who started it, they, they wanted to accept all coins as a form of payment. Yep. They were selling hardware and products and services to the uh, crypto mining industry. And they were uh, big fans of the blockchain space. And so from 2010, 2011, the founders were originally involved in that space. And a year or so later, they said, hey, I really want to accept this as a form of payment. And then once they built a little platform to be able to accept it, they then realized, wait a second, we're getting, we keep getting asked, can we, ex- can we do the same? Can we do the same? So it just kind of grew over that space. And two years later, there was a couple thousand merchants and a year later, there was 50,000 merchants. So it was that sort of evolution period that, that was through that process. And, and originally, because it was solving a problem. Okay, wow. Uh, why, why is coin payments so important at the moment? So why do, do people really pay with coins? Or um, is it just the nice to have? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's interesting because um, we just put out a, a fairly good report with with sort of the period of growth within accepting crypto as a form of payment. And we're seeing a huge adoption right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Last month, we processed over $570 million in crypto transactions. 
Um, so in that period and process, we'll see, we see a lot of adoption happening where a year before that, it was probably half of the volume. So, you know, in, in the growth period, we're seeing more and more usage of stable coins, especially in transactional space. Uh, of course, Bitcoin is our number one. It's about 80% of all our transactions right now is in Bitcoin as a, as a form of payment. Okay, yeah. Um, when, when I am a private user uh, buying at a store um, and want to pay with, uh, with, let's say, Bitcoins, um, I always thought, so um, if I have Bitcoins, I, I, I collect them, I save it, I use it for, 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 for my, um, yeah, my, my rent <laughs> at, at some point. Um, why do people pay with Bitcoin at the moment? So why, why do they um, start really using it? Or how, how did that change happen in the, in the mind of the people? Sure. Well, I think if you, if in, our, in our report, we see originally over the years, we were always around 95% of transactions happening in Bitcoin. So yep. it was a much higher percentage of specifically in the Bitcoin transactions. However, as I share with merchants today, you know, the usage of credit cards took about 50 years for adoption. So you could say the same thing a number of years ago. Why is somebody choosing to use a credit card to make a transaction over cash? Because originally it was really cash transactions. And they became easier, easier method to making those payments. So if you're holding crypto, if you're holding a MasterCard, your credit card, a Visa card, an Amex card, or you have money in your bank account, you have, as the consumer, the option to make purchases today. So if you're at a merchant and say you're NordVPN, for example, who's a client of ours who uses our platform to accept payments, if you're using NordVPN and you have the choice to make the payment with either your Bitcoin or your credit card or your bank card, whichever, it's the consumer who chooses to what, what they want to make the payment in. So it's nice, well, yeah. yeah, right. So that, that's where a merchant, in my view, should always accept all forms of payment. And, and I'm really payment agnostic. I, I, my, most of my team are 100% crypto, 100% blockchain, and that's all they believe in. Well, I believe that consumers and merchants should have the choice and, and have the option of accepting all forms of payment. And we're seeing more and more, for sure, moving towards crypto. But we're, we're still just at the beginning stages. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Um, for which e-commerce solutions do you have uh, already plugins, or how easy is it to um, get your uh, your tool uh, into an e-commerce store? Um, I think there's about thirty-five of them or so. Um, pretty much all the general ones that are there, whether it's you know Shopify or somebody selling on through the Shopify platforms, or Big Commerce or WooCommerce or um, whichever is the systems, we, we have about 30 of them that are uh, abilities for you to integrate directly into your e-commerce website. Mm -hmm. And how can I, um, let's say as a, as a merchant, um, let's say I, I accept now the, uh, the, the payments, how do I get my money? So how does this work? Do you send it directly to my bank account or do I have a wallet with you in a specific uh, crypto or, or how does this work? Sure. So we uh, provide a custodial wallet service. So as you've accepted a Bitcoin as your transaction, we settle that Bitcoin directly to the ledger that's that's specific to your account within our platform. So our custodial wallet system is always holding your crypto. At some point, if you want to move that crypto to, say, um, convert it to fiat or maybe convert it to another uh, token, we facilitate some of those services currently. We're working on facilitating a global f system where we can actually convert it to fiat and then have it settled to your bank account. Currently, we provide the custodial crypto and we allow them to allow the individual to convert that crypto to another coin if they so wish to. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is really interesting. So, um, what, what do I need to do to get started with you? Pretty simple. Um, it's a simple sign-up link on our website, uh, coinpayments.net. And through that process, uh, you submit your email address and your password, do a uh, email verification, and that's, that's all you need to do to set up your account. What we strongly suggest and recommend is some of the people uh, KYC their account right away, as if um, at a certain number of volume will require it anyways. However, 
if people are, are looking at really doing their business uh, and getting transactions, it's best to KYC their account right away. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, what I know from credit card providers, um, there are a lot of documents from the company needed. So yeah. you need to sign contracts, you need to upload them, you need to send your passport um, and verify, verify, verify everything. Yeah. What do I need to do for the crypto part? Well, honestly, just to set up an account is very easy. You don't need to submit your email address and verify your email address. It's, it's, it's That's exactly really right. awesome. That's really awesome. And this is really something uh, th- something new in the entire world. This is um, um, uh, because in the, in the in entire payment world in e-commerce, I'd say, because typically you really had troubles getting all the things um, to, to um, uh, legal and so on. And in this case, sign up, uh, install the plug, in and you're uh, actually you're done. So Absolutely. this is really interesting. Um, yeah, you've been uh, elected to the emergency uh, emerging payments association advisor board uh, for 2021. Um, this is the first time a crypto company uh, will representing there. Um, yeah. What does that mean for you? What 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 what? Yeah, what what can you imagine about that? Well, it's, it, first of all, it's a very it's very exciting. I've, I've uh, actually known the the guys and the founders and the people in in the Emerging Payments Association for many years in in different payments industries and spaces, and it's it's very exciting that when they approached me about it and asked me if I was I was keen or interested in participating, and then had to go through the voting <laughs> process, and people elected me to be the representative. It was exciting for a number of reasons. One is that. The Emerging Payments Association really has a, a good foothold into the FCA and regulators and, and different bodies that they're representing about 300,000 people that work in the payments wow. industry in the UK. Yeah. So their, their word and their presentation and their support in this space is really looked at uh, very strongly. And I appreciate being a part of that process where we've now submitted some initial uh, findings and our responses and our sort of support around the crypto space in the UK market, which is really amazing. The Emerging Payments Association now also has other uh, divisions, which is in Europe and Asia and and others. So that same voice and support will spread across those different areas. So it's exciting to be a part of that for sure. Mm -hmm. And um, what do you do to ensure uh, a constant uh, customer support and customer experience um, for your company? What do you do and which tools do you use to make your customers happy? Sure. Well, that's, that's always something that's changing and evolving as, as yeah. we have more and more customers and more and more customers in different languages. It's, uh, it's an evolving process. So we do use some um, automated systems that allow us to sort of uh, respond instantly on very general questions. We have a number of individual people that are experts in the blockchain and crypto space that are supporting individual customers. We are working on some improvements to our current system just because it's a it's a very tedious process of making sure that everything's answered. And even more so is making sure the security is still there. And that's yeah. a little bit of the challenges where frustration customers are a little frustrated with is that they want immediate support or they want to talk to me. They, they reach out to me directly. Well, I don't even have access to your server or to the back end or to accounts. So it, it's difficult for me to answer the problem or solve the problems right away. So we have a customer support system that's automated and it, it tracks every element of questions and provides customer support tickets and allows us to be able to manage that properly, plus maintain security. The last thing we would want is somehow somebody getting access to somebody's account and and uh, saying, "Oh, I can't move all my coins, and I want to move it somewhere else." So yeah. similar to a to a bank, you just don't say, "Hey, this is me, so just move my money." <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. we we really try to provide the best support as possible, and we have a pretty good track record of providing good support. That's great. Um, what role does automation play in your operations? Um, you know, I, I guess the automation side of it, when it comes to how our infrastructure works, um, node management and 
movement of our data systems or servers or support and systems such as uh, you know any security elements. We have a lot of automation systems that are built into that. We don't have a lot of, um, I guess you'd say AI at the moment, but which is probably some of our next steps we'll be looking at and in, in more so in the, the customer support side of things. Mm-hmm. However, it is, uh, it is something that's sort of on a roadmap down the road the, for a while. Mm-hmm. Best part to ask, what are your plans for the next 12 months? What do you want to achieve? Well, we have a number of initiatives at the moment. First, we're working on launching a, uh, a credit card, which uh, is a little different than most uh, other crypto cards that are out there, which are debit card programs. Um, so that's something that we're working on. We're also working on a global distribution uh, fee settlement solution where um, everybody will be able to convert their crypto to fiat if, if they so choose to and, and send those funds to their bank account. So those are two of the main things. We're also um, about to launch a, a division and a whole team in Brazil. There's about 2.5 million crypto users in Brazil alone. Wow. Wow. We, uh, we have a good number of people that are there, but it's still a very small number compared to the actual user base there. So we've got some launches and support there. And, and we're also launching a whole new payments platform, which we've been working on for a couple of years now. So a new UIX, a new backend, a new administration systems, new security functionality. It's just so a whole new uh, payments platform completely. So mm. that's uh, those are some of the exciting things that are that we're working on, of course, over this uh, this next year. And we have some pretty big news that we'll probably be announcing over the next six months or so as well. Yeah, and you have a great newsletter. What I have seen, so <laughs> the 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 coin payments digest, um, which is packed with up to date information about crypto, crypto at all, and uh, yeah, and a lot of experience that you have uh, yeah. collected. Yeah, that's cool. Um, so um, you are, yeah. Don't <laughs> don't get me wrong. Frankly spoken, you are a dinosaur in e commerce. Um, <laughs> But who has taught you the most about e-commerce in your career? You know, I I think um, participating in in groups and associations and elements such as like Money Money 2020 that I I usually go to every year, the the people that are supportive around the payment space definitely I've learned a lot from. Um, Mm -hmm. I think more so that I've learned from entrepreneurs. Uh, and other entrepreneurs in my life that have supported and, and shown me that you just stay at what it is that you're doing, right? And, and not giving up. So I think the, the biggest lessons that I've learned are, are actually from other entrepreneurs, um, not necessarily just in the payment space, but in entrepreneurs overall. Mm-hmm. Great. Thank you so much for your time, Jason. It was really a pleasure talking to you. And uh Yeah, if you don't support crypto in your card at the moment, it is definitely something you should try out. Um, go to uh, coinpayments.net, uh, give it a try and add a few cryptocurrencies um, to your shopping card and see if it performs. Um, it's as easy as sign up for a SaaS application, um, just going on the website and uh, yeah, give it a try. Thank you very much, Jason. Thanks, Have a Have great, great time. Day. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And that's it for this episode of the Ecom Ops Podcast. If you enjoyed listening and would like us to find and interview more e-commerce operations experts, please search for Ecom Ops Podcast in your favorite podcast listening app and then subscribe, rate, and review. Until next time. 